Hi everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a little audio visualization in P5JS using the get peaks method of the sound file object in the sound library of P5. Now, here in the reference of P5, uh, there is an object called p5.soundfile, and this is what we can use if we want to upload any kind of audio file, not any kind of audio file. Um, specifically, uh, we have options to upload uh, MP3s, OGGs, WAVs, and M4As. Uh, it does not support other types of audio files, but we're just going to upload an MP3. Um, but once we do that, we are going to take a look at this get peaks method here, which um, is going to provide us with an array of the amplitude of the sound file that we can draw in a static waveform. Um, so let's jump right in here. So first, if you are not sure how to upload a sound file into a P5 sketch, we need to go over here uh, to where it sort of shows our sketch files. We have our HTML, our sketch, and our CSS. So we're going to click this little down here. We're going to go to Upload File, and then we click this box. And this will now take us to our sort of file finder. Uh, I'm going to use this Barry White loop here. This is a drum break from I'm going to love you just a little bit more. It's an MP3. And then I just click open. It uploads it. And there you see that this Barry White sound file has now been added to my sketch. Now, in order to load this into my sketch in the code, uh, I do need to reference the name of the file. So what I usually like to do with a long file like this is I'm just going to rename it uh, Barry.mp3, and that'll just make things a little bit easier. So now I'm going to go back into my sketch, and I need to create a variable in which I'm going to store that sound file object. And since it is uh, an MP3, it takes up a certain amount of space uh, and memory. And so since we are dealing with a web page here, I want to make sure that the sound file is loaded into uh, the web page before I do anything else. So if I try and access it, I know that it is there. So to do that in P5, we're going to use this preload function. And now in preload, which will run before the setup, so setup runs right at the beginning of the sketch, preload is actually going to run before the setup to take care of any uh, things we need to make sure we have access to before that. So I'm going to refer to this variable here, Barry, which I made, and this is where I'm going to load in the sound file, which is, and I have to refer to it exactly by name here, mp so Barry.mp3, this needs to be exactly as it is here. There cannot be any mistakes or else the sound file will not load. All right, so now quickly I can go to Barry.play just to make sure that it did load. And there we have it, okay? Uh, but at the moment I'm not interested in playing it. So as I said, we're going to use this get peaks. Uh, sound or method to the sound file. So what get peaks is going to do is it's going to return an array of the amplitude peaks, which is basically the volume uh, at any given point of this audio file. And we can then play around with this. Now, the nice thing about this method is that we can provide exactly how big we want this array to be. So the default is five times the width of the browser, uh, which is pretty big and um, not as practical for what we want to do. But we can kind of specify exactly how many uh, things we want in this array, which we can then play around with. So the way we do this is um, I'm going to create another global variable here called peaks. And in peaks, in setup here, I'm going to write berry.getpeaks. Okay, and now for the argument, I am going to visualize this, uh, this audio file. So I want to use the length of my canvas, so I'm just going to make it width. So that means that when it returns this array of all the different uh, audio or the amplitude points throughout 
this audio file, it's going to give me a total of, in this case, 400. So I will be able to visualize this sound wave through the entire canvas. Right? And then console.log, I am going to just log peaks, and we can take a look at what that gives. So we press play. We don't hear it because I got rid of the, the dot play method. But here you see this has a floating array here. And if we go down, we see these numbers here. So all of these are going to be between 0 and 1 because uh, the amplitude data is sort of rendered in that way in P5. And I go through all the way. And it just gives me all these numbers between 0 and 1 all the way up to 399, which would be 400 uh, indices in this array. So now I am going to play around uh, and visualize what we have going on here. So I'm going to go into Draw. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a line for each, uh, each piece of data in this array. So to go through that, I'm going to need a for loop. So let i equal 0, then i is less than peaks.length, and then i plus plus. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a line that represents each of the data here. So I'm going to do a line, and we're going to start it at uh, i. So we're going to start it at 0, so on the left side of the canvas. okay. And then what we're going to do is we are going to do peaks i. Okay. Uh, so really what I want to do here is I'm going to start it from the middle of the canvas, and I want my line to go up in one direction and down in the other. But I'll kind of show you what this would look like. So I'm going to start in the middle, height divided by 1 plus peaks. Uh, and then we will do i again. And then this time we'll just do heights divided by 2. It's just I'm going to kind of do this in steps so you can kind of see what's going on. So now I'm going to press play. And really all we see is a straight line going across. Now I can kind of zoom in here, although even if I do, you can kind of make out some little things. Now, the issue with this is all these values are between 0 and 1. So I'm not really going to see much here. So what I want to do here is um, I want to multiply the number in peaks, each one of these, by a certain value. So let's just say 100, OK? So that will then give me a value between 0 and 100, as opposed to 0 and 1, which is not going to show us much on here. So now if I go back and I press play, now we see something happening that looks a bit more like we want it to. OK, so um, since they're mostly positive numbers, they're going down here on uh, the screen. But I want this to look a bit more like a regular audio wave. So I'm going to have these peaks going up, and then I'm just going to kind of mirror these peaks in the other y point on this line that I'm drawing. So I'm going to plus peaks on one side. I'm going to minus the peaks on the other. So I'm going to have them going in this way from the center of the canvas, this height divided by 2. And then I'm just going to kind of mirror that by going the opposite direction. So instead of plus peaks times 100, I'm going to do minus peaks times 100. And there. Uh, so now we have a pretty good rendition of what this looks like. And just for the sake of contrast, I do, and let's, I'll just play it once so we can kind of remember what it sounds like and all. So that's that audio file there that we have. Now just for contrast, I do have that same audio file loaded here into Audacity. So we can see, and maybe I'll pop out of here so we can kind of get them side by side. So if we compare now, we have a pretty good representation of this audio file that we've now drawn here in P5. 
Now, just to kind of play off that idea and audacity, one more thing that I'm going to do with this is uh, I'm going to make a line that kind of goes across the canvas in real time so we can sort of see where in this audio file we are at any given moment while it is playing. Um, so to do that, I need another line. But first, what I need is um, I want this line to kind of follow in real time where we are in this. And so to do that, I'm going to need two uh, more methods from the sound file object. And those methods are going to be duration and current time. So duration is going to be the entire length of the audio file that I have. And current time uh, will return the specific time or position of the sound file at any given moment. And if it's in draw, it's going to constantly be updating uh, as the draw loop goes. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make create a variable here. I'm just going to call it t, uh, thinking in short for time. And I'm going to use the map function here. I have created a tutorial about this uh, previously, which I will try and link to, which gets more into the use of duration and current time with audio files. So I'm not going to get too deep into it here. But the idea is, is I'm going to map uh, the current time. So the sound file is called very. So very dot current time. And that would be between 0 and the length of the sound file, which we would use with duration. So this is basically saying we're going to map the current time, which is going to be between 0 and the duration of it. And we're going to change that. We're mapping that now to the width of the canvas. So this will now take the value of the time being played in the audio file, which is between 0 and the length of the file. And it will return us with a point between 0 and the width of the canvas. So now what I can do, uh, and I'm going to make this line red. So just for contrast sake. And then I'll also need to make sure I keep this one blue. So and then I'm going to make a line at t starting at 0 on the y-axis, and then t, and then height. So now when I press play, I should see a red line that kind of goes along this audio file as it plays. And then you see the line gets to the end when the audio file ends. So just to see uh, that in a little more detail, I'm now going to loop this uh, audio file and we'll just see this red line kind of keeping track with where we are in the sound file at any given moment. And that's it. So there you have it. That is uh, sort of an introduction to this get peaks method and there's a lot of fun stuff you can do playing around with this uh, I've been working with chopping up samples uh, and sort of visualizing them in that way uh, which maybe I'll get to some tutorials on in the future or at least post some of the things that I've been doing but that is the basic idea of how you can visualize some audio data using the get peaks method